Hello, my name is John Markowitz. I'm an engineer in the Clean Energy Technology Group here at the New York Power Authority, and I'd like to talk to you today about our Case Solar program. And the objective of our Case Solar program is to allow your school to develop solar energy at your school and to make it affordable and easy to do. It's a partnership program between the New York Power Authority, or NYPA, NYSERDA, the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority, and the New York State Education Department. This webinar is one in a series of three. First one, we talked about the incentives for going solar and the different ownership options, and we compared owning a solar array directly at your school district versus having a third party own and operate it for you. And we looked at some of the economics and the difference between those two options. We looked at the solar site assessment process and how we determine whether your buildings and grounds are suitable for solar. And we talked about the free site survey process and how we can provide you these feasibility reports for free. In this particular webinar, we're going to be talking about what a solar development looks like, what the construction process looks like, how long it takes. And we'll be doing a pretty in-depth discussion of some of the contract terms that are involved in having a third party own and operate solar on your building. So this particular webinar is really targeted towards the school district business managers. As a school district business manager, I would imagine you'd have five key questions about going solar on your school. You'd want to know what are the stages of solar development? What's this process look like? How long does it take? You'll also want to know about the solar PPA or power purchase agreement and what are the typical terms and conditions that you'll have to look through before you can sign one of these agreements for your district. And in one of these solar power purchase agreements, what are your responsibilities versus the responsibilities of the solar developer that will own the solar array and operate it on your property? A key question is, what happens at the end? This is a 20-year agreement that you're doing to have solar on your school, but what happens when that agreement expires? Do the solar panels stay on the roof? Do they come down? What happens? So we'll talk a bit about that today. First, to let you know about the New York Power Authority, or NYPA, we're the largest state-owned public power organization in the country. We don't use any taxpayer funds in our operations. We provide power both wholesale and retail in New York State, and we provide about a quarter of all the electricity in New York State. About three quarters of that energy is all coming from our hydroelectric plants in Niagara and on the St. Lawrence Rivers. We're also very active in energy efficiency in government buildings throughout the state and clean energy technologies such as solar energy. And we've invested almost $2 billion in such efficiency and renewable energy projects throughout the state. And Case Solar is one of those programs that looks towards renewable energy and advancing that within the state. And it's basically an aggregated purchasing program to increase the solar buying power of school districts throughout New York State. So we'll be basically forming a purchasing coalition of school districts like yours to all go out and do a competitive procurement that NYPA will administer on your behalf, get the economies of scale up, get you the most aggressive and attractive pricing for solar that's possible. We'll also be providing free feasibility studies to your facilities managers to give you a sense of which of your properties are suitable for solar development. We'll also take advantage of all the state incentives that are available from NYSERDA to help you go solar. And we'll also be able to take advantage of the various federal tax credits. And that will all, in turn, help bring down the cost of the solar energy that you'll be receiving and make it competitive with the electricity you're getting from your existing electric utility. We've also partnered closely with the State Education Department to expedite the permitting process to get you through the whole design, permitting, and construction phase of this program. In terms of the stages and what to expect in a solar development program, the first phase is your request for proposals, and that's the process that NYPA will be managing on behalf of the school districts throughout the state. We'll be doing that administrative work, going out, getting a competitive bid, interviewing all the solar developers, and picking a short list of developers that you could then have a mini bid with in each region of the state. And that will take several months, and that process is starting late in 2014. Then there's the site development phase. This happens after the contracts are all signed, and we'll discuss that in some detail. There's a construction phase. You'll want to allow three to eight months for that. 
there's operations and maintenance. That's the longest stage in this whole process, and that could be a 20-year term of the agreement where this solar array is up and operational on your roof and being maintained by that third party. And the final stage is your end of contract, end of life of the solar array, and we'll discuss what happens in that stage as well. In terms of the timeline for all those stages we just described, you're going to want to allow a year to two years to go through that whole process. In that process, we'll have to allow time for the State Education Department permitting process. So even though that solar array is going to be owned by a private third party, it's still a construction project, it's still happening on school property, and the folks at SED will still want to review all the drawings that the solar developer will provide to them regarding the structural integrity of your roof and also the electrical connection of the solar to the school's electric supply. That whole process will happen, but we're working closely with the State Education Department to expedite those permits and work you through that process. It's an important thing to keep in mind that the federal tax credits are one of the things that really makes solar attractive. Those tax credits are set to sunset, so they're currently at 30% of the cost of the entire project, both labor and materials. That tax credit is going to reduce to 10% at the end of 2016 and your solar array will have to be fully installed and operational by the end of 2016 to get the full 30 percent tax credit so we're rolling out this program as quickly as possible to take advantage of those tax credits and in terms of looking at those contracts time is of the essence to make sure we can take advantage of all the benefits of those tax credits I'll talk a bit about the contract terms in each of these phases. The first phase, there's some minimal technical requirements and we'll be looking at all those in the RFP. In the development stage, it's more about the process and who's responsible for what and what the timelines are for getting this solar array built. The construction phase, there's some terms and conditions we'll want to look at in terms of the commercial operation date. That's the first date that the solar array is up, operational, and exporting power. Also performance guarantees that this third party will be obligated to give you a guaranteed minimum amount of energy every month. They are contractually obligated to do so, so we'll talk a bit about some of those terms. There's also site access terms and then maintenance responsibilities that come in in the following stage. And then there's a whole series of terms that have to do with the end of the contract and end of life whether the school district decides to exercise an early termination option and buy the solar array from the solar developer several years into the program and transfer ownership or whether they just want the solar array removed at the end of the program. The first stage is a request for proposal stage and here at NIPA our staff will manage a competitive solicitation on your behalf and we'll build this consortium of interested school districts all throughout the state we have issued the RFQ in early September, which is a qualifications document, and only the solar developers that we have scored as qualified to pull off a program of this size will be allowed to then bid in the RFP phase. We're currently scheduled to release that RFP in November of 2014 and start accepting pricing information from these solar developers for the different regions of the state we will select a short list of winning bidders for each region of the state and then that developer will give you binding pricing for your individual school buildings. In terms of the terms on a standard power purchase agreement, the main term is the pricing of the solar energy. That's the dollars and cents of this whole program so they'll be giving you a cost per kilowatt hour of solar energy You'll have to compare that to the cost of the energy you're getting from your electric utility and decide whether solar will save you money or not. The pricing is quoted one of two ways. They'll either give you a flat cost per kilowatt hour of solar energy for the entire 20 year term of the contract, or they might give you a lower cost of solar energy in the early year and then it escalates at a known rate, say 2% per year over the course of 20 years is sort of a typical contract term. In either event, you have budgetary certainty and you'll know exactly what the solar energy will cost 10 or 15 years into this agreement, which is something you can't say about the energy you get from your electric utility. The standard PPA will also define the contract duration. 20 years is the most typical. 25-year terms are not uncommon in the industry. It'll also define the rights to environmental attributes, also known as renewable energy credits. 
and it'll define who gets those. They have some monetary value. It'll also define who gets the NYSERDA incentives, and that'll all be defined in that power purchase agreement. If your roof needs a repair of some sort before the solar project can start, that will all be defined in the contract. Who's responsible for the roof repairs and the cost? Sometimes the roof repairs can be bundled into your cost of energy, so you're indirectly financing some roof repairs through this solar contract. That's another possibility. Additional terms that you'll see in a standard PPA, the responsibilities of the project owner, this would be the third party solar developer, and the host site, which would be you, the school district. There'll be terms of what happens if you need to sever the agreement. Say you're closing a school building and it happens to be the one that the solar arrays on. There are terms and conditions for how you go about severing such an agreement and removing the solar panel before the 20 year term is over. There's various guarantees and liquidated damages that occur if the solar developer does not meet their obligations to provide you solar energy. Those will all be defined. There'll be end of term options of what happens at the end of year 20 when the solar array contract is finished. That'll all be defined in that contract. There'll also be an early buyout option that if the school district decides in year 10 to buy the system, that'll all be defined what the procedure is for exercising that option. In the site development stage, there's a series of tasks that the solar developer has to undertake. One's an engineering and design phase, another's a permitting phase that they do in coordination with the New York State Education Department. So they would prepare all the proper engineering drawings required to go through that permitting process. Then they would also apply on your behalf for these NYSERDA incentives. The NYSERDA incentives would end up going to that third party solar developer because they will actually own the solar array. So they will take advantage of all the NYSERDA benefits, the tax credits, use that money coming to them to lower the cost of solar energy to you. And they will also arrange their financing with their banks so that they can go out, procure the labor needed to install the equipment, and procure the solar panels and other electrical equipment as well. In terms of the engineering and permitting phases, there is an electrical inspection involved. There's also civil and structural work to make sure that the school roof can actually accept the additional weight of having solar panels on the roof. The state education department's involved in that whole permitting phase. They will look at the various environmental electrical drawings, zoning if required, if say it's a ground-mounted solar array. There's also a permitting process that entails the local electric utility because you're connecting and running this system in parallel with their system. So they will come, inspect the system, and give you a permit to operate it. The good thing about participating in this kind of third-party owned case solar program is that the solar developer will do all this work for you. They will be providing all these drawings and working this whole thing through the permitting process with a minimal amount of involvement on your staff because they'll be doing the paperwork on your behalf. In terms of responsibilities, the third party owner of the solar array will be responsible for doing all the engineering and permitting. But you as a host site do have some responsibilities. You will be providing them site access. You will be assisting them in the construction process in scheduling it, giving them an area to store their equipment and so forth providing them the information they might need in terms of drawings of your building so that they can obtain the proper permits, and you will have final design approval. Your staff will have some involvement in the design. In terms of the NYSERDA incentives, they typically cover about a quarter of the cost of doing a solar program, but they do go to that third party owner and they are used to lower your energy costs. A thing to note about the NYSERDA incentives is they have a new program called the Megawatt Block Incentive, and it does decline over time. So the earliest schools that apply to the K-Solar program that execute the contracts needed and go into the construction phase, they will get the highest incentives from the state for doing this. So there is a benefit to moving earlier, and the solar will be more economical for the first group that goes in. The solar power purchase agreement will have provisions in it to accommodate what happens if the project owner fails to receive the proper NYSERDA incentives. Once that phase is done, we move on to the construction phase. There are several parts of the construction phase. The first one is procuring the solar equipment. Second one is preparing the site. So that might require some re-roofing or roof repair. 
And if it's ground mount, just leveling out the property so that you'd have the site preparation phase. There might be some civil or structural work. Then the final phase is the solar panel installation, which actually is one of the quicker parts of the whole process. Here are some photos to give you a sense of what one of these construction projects looks like. Here's a large ground mount solar array. You could see some of the civil work going on to level out the space to install some of the mounting hardware that's required for a large ground mount array. Here's some examples of a rooftop solar installation. So you could see how your school district would have some responsibilities of giving the contractor a staging area to put all their materials and to schedule this so that it works with the schedule of your school operations so that they can get the solar equipment up on the roof and get the construction project underway. In terms of post-construction work, there's the electrical interconnection. The solar developer then will connect the solar system into the school building's electrical system and get the proper permits from the electric utility to put it in an operational mode running in parallel with the electric utility. There's a various list of tests that are done at this post-construction phase. Then you do final punch list items with the contractor and fully commission the site and put it into operation. There are some contractual issues in this post-construction phase that we'll want to look at. One of them is the electrical interconnection costs. In most cases, there isn't a significant cost for connecting up to your local utility. But in the event, say your school is at the very end of an electrical feeder from your utility and it cannot accommodate the full amount of export that your solar array might be capable of producing, there might be some one-time costs that the utility would place upon the solar developer. The solar developer would then have to negotiate with the school district to determine how much the cost of the solar energy would be impacted by that one-time cost. And that's all spelled out in the power purchase agreement. That would be known very early in the process. Then there are liquidated damages if for some reason the solar developer does not meet their obligations to bring the solar array up to commercial operation on the scheduled date. And there are also performance guarantees that they must meet a minimum production requirement of a certain amount of energy per month coming out of the solar array. In terms of the operations and maintenance, now this is the part that takes 20 years, so this is the longest stage of all the stages. There's really a minimal amount of operations and maintenance that's done. Pretty much they sit on the roof and they do what they're meant to do, which is generate energy. Those solar panels are not washed or snow is not removed from them. They're basically just left there. If they're covered with snow for a week, basically you get zero solar power that particular week, and that's normal. That's part of the program, and that's accounted for in the economics of solar. There is some preventative and corrective maintenance that's done. It's completely the system owner's responsibility. So that third party is going to be doing all of that work on your behalf. Your primary responsibility is coordinating with them to give them access to the site so they could do any minor repairs they might need to do. That solar developer is going to be very motivated to repair that system should any components go down because their sole source of income is the solar energy that they're selling you, the school district, through these power purchase agreements. So if they're down for a day or two because of some equipment failure, they'll be very motivated to send a technician to repair that. Solar panels do degrade over time. Degradation anywhere from half a percent up to one percent per year is completely normal. That's accounted for in the solar power purchase agreement contract. The major responsibility you have as a site host in this kind of contract is to maintain proper sunlight on those solar panels and preventing shade. So any new construction that might shade the solar panels obviously is a problem. Any tree growth that would possibly shade the solar panels is a problem. All of that would be your responsibility to ensure that the solar developer has proper access to sunlight. Another benefit of having a third party put solar is that they will provide you a system dashboard like what is seen on this slide. They will be remotely monitoring your solar array. They'll know if it's having a technical issue long before you will because even if they're in another state, they'll be monitoring this remotely and they'll be able to see what's going on on your solar array. Other benefits are is your staff will be able to see what's going on. And you can give access to the general public to this kind of a system dashboard. And you could imagine students and parents in your school district would be able to see the solar array, see how its production went up or down based on the local weather. And it has a real educational benefit to the people you serve.
And then you might be asking what happens at the end of the solar PPA. So the default condition is that at the end of year 20, the solar array is removed at no cost to you, the school district. That's the normal end of a solar PPA. The solar developer comes back, they remove all the equipment, set the site back to original conditions, and we all leave as friends. There are some other options that you can exercise, and these are all defined in the power purchase agreement. One is an early buyout option, and this could occur any time after year seven. The school district can get a price quote from the solar developer, and at that price, buy the system out from under them and operate it yourselves. That purchase will happen at fair market value, and an assessor would have to come in, assess the value of your solar array at that point in time, determine how much it's depreciated, and then agree on a price. Another additional option you have is you can negotiate with that solar developer at the end of year 20 and decide to buy the system from them at that point. And it might be a very inexpensive purchase, and you might be able to get another five to 10 years out of that system. So that's a decision you'd have to make at that point and decide if you'd want to exercise that option rather than have them remove it. For additional information on the program, I'd invite you to visit our website where you can register. You can listen to more pre recorded webinars like this one. We also have an FAQ posted with questions that come in from school districts like yourself. I'd invite you to go to the NYSERDA's website for more information on how the solar incentives work. We also have our contact information here, and we welcome your questions either by email or by calling us directly. And I'd also like to let you know about a sister program to the K-Solar program, and that's called Community Solar New York. This program is going to be administered by NYSERDA, and it's basically a program where your school can act as a hub for your community to get more involved in solar energy, to learn more about it, and for your community to do the same thing that we're doing here in K-Solar, which is local homeowners and business owners could all pool together, form a coalition. A nonprofit funded by NYSERDA would administer this program. And then as a group, they would procure solar for dozens of homes and businesses rather than just for themselves, hopefully get the most advantageous pricing for themselves. And your school can serve as a hub, as a meeting place to have these kind of town hall meetings to make this kind of a program a reality in your community. On this slide, I've given you the contact information for the program manager at NYSERDA that you would contact if you're interested in pursuing this opportunity. I thank you for your time, and I hope that you register for our program, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you.